Is this the busiest Alabama sports weekend in uh, a month of Sundays? We think so. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me. Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day or watch or whatever. Uh, Jimmy, man, what a weekend. Monster weekend. Huge, huge weekend. And uh, you can't beat it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But let's start with something that happened even really technically before the weekend. And that's a commitment that sort of came out of nowhere. And I think it's Abdul Sanders. Is that, is that how you, you spell uh, Abdu- Abdu- it? Abdullah. Abdullah. It is Abdullah? I think it's Abdullah. But- well, it's it's spelled. Uh, it wouldn't seem it's A B D U A L L. So I don't have an H on there. Yeah, 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 Ab- no. Ab- yeah, yeah. You're right. It's Abdul. That's right. It's Abdul. I don't know. I don't. Okay. Yeah, Abdul. Regardless, uh, you know, it's so, so funny because yesterday I went to practice with the media, and uh, you know, so it's, it's rare that we're all huddled up and talking. And one of the subjects that came up, and I'm a big proponent of this, is I'm like. The recruiting guys need to put phonetic pronunciations when you're recruiting a guy that's got, you know, that's not James Smith, you know, uh, whenever it's a kid. Because we need to get the names right out of respect. We need to get the names right. But, hey, how do we, you know, it, it's it's not something that everybody just automatically knows. Uh, we don't work recruiting specifically, me and Luke, meaning we don't interview players or interview coaches, not, not in general. Luke does sometimes with HSAA on occasion. But the point being, um, the recruiting industry should do a better job of the pronunciations of these kids' names because some of them can be a little tricky, and we want to get it right. I know you, the listener, y'all want to know uh, the correct two. So anyway, back to Sanders. We can call him Sanders. Uh it was a surprise in the sense that uh, that I don't think we knew the commitment was coming, uh, but this had been a priority. He had been a priority for the staff. They were recruiting him when they were at Washington. This is a DeBoer, Courtney Morgan, you know, uh, Jamarcus Shepard type guy. They were rec- recruiting him when they were at Washington, thought the world of him to the point to, hey, I know we're going up to Alabama. This This kid's Alabama good. You know, let's let's and uh, man, I, so I'm kind of new to him, and I watched tape yesterday. I was pretty blown away by the tape, really. I mean, in terms of, I was surprised by what I saw. Uh, never should be when you're talking about a kid from modern day. They're always extremely well coached and ready. And uh, as a matter of fact, when we talk about practice a little later. We're going to talk about another modern day kid, Zabian Brown. Uh, and, and the reason that we should be excited about Abdul Sanders is uh, is is Zabian Brown and Bryce Young, and, and Damani Jackson. Um, these kids just show up ready to play because they're playing at such an elite program in high school. And it is a wonderful high school. And, look, I'm, I'm for this. Now, look, he's not the most highly rated kid that we're going to have. I think he's going to move up. And if you want to call it a Bama bump, feel free. But, again, Jimmy and I have said this a few times on this very podcast. It is very difficult to get your rankings correct a year and a half in advance. And that's where we are. I think this kid is going to move up. I like his game a lot. I've seen some comparisons to sort of a CJ Mosley type game. I, I see it. I see it. Um, he's not Reuben Foster. He's more CJ Mosley. Both of them have their pluses and negatives, but uh, I'm, I'm very hype about that. He looks like a very clean kid. I mean, like clean in the sense that like he's just, he looks like he's got it together. Just his profile pick looks like he's just got it together. Um, and also, if you're at Matter Day or Modern Day, or however you say it, um, you are not going to be uh, intimidated by playing for or against anybody. You have already, I mean, Modern Day High School is like the Alabama of high schools in a way, especially in California. They've already groomed you very, very well. So um, I, I will always take a kid from there, and I love having that pipeline going, and we obviously have one uh, at that school. 
And, you know, my favorite player of all time, at least he's in the top three, Bryce Young came from there. So I think it's a, it's a big deal. I um, also think he's a, he's a good combination of t- the modern linebacker. He's going to play inside linebacker at Alabama. The modern inside linebacker, first and foremost, now you got to play in space. That kid has to play in space or you can't do it. And this kid does. He, he excels in space. Very first clip on his highlight clip is a great play he makes in space. I mean, like, wow, a wow play in space. That's the first thing. But the kids that play in space generally aren't the old throwbacks. When we were growing up, inside linebackers had to play in a phone booth. They were, that's what you asked them to do is, hey, we need you to be nasty in the trenches. And we need you to take on the fullback and defeat the fullback and throw him out of the way and then tackle the back in the A gap and, and take on offensive linemen. I know you weigh 230 pounds, but go take on that 300 pound guard. That's what we used to ask him to do, right? Well, the great thing about Abdul Sanders is yes, he's a space linebacker. He's a guy that will, will play in this modern football very well, but he's also a bit of a throwback. This kid will bust helmets. I mean, he, he's a physical presence, an excellent tackler, and I would say that there's a little bit of maybe some Kendrick Blackshire in this guy, not built and ripped like Blackshire, but what I mean is he's going to be very comfortable in the tackle box taking on backs. He, he'll be comfortable doing that. He's not just a, hey, I got to run out 25 yards laterally towards the sideline and chase down a fast guy. No, no, he, he'll, 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 he'll bust heads with a big dude right in the A-gap. And meanwhile, speaking of modern day, uh, Jordan Davidson, a top 100 player uh, who's a running back from that same high school, will be visiting Alabama uh, this week, and uh, that's pretty awesome. So, yep. look, I, I love Alabama's running back room. I like the running back we already have committed. I, I like some of the other running backs we're looking at, but I sort of like this dude too. It's going to be a big weekend for Alabama. Dijon Lee will be here. Uh, Ty Jackson, who's number one linebacker Ooh, from some that guy. Ty Jackson, if whatever you do today, if you find 10 spare minutes, go to your Google button, hit Ty Jackson, Florida linebacker huddle, H-U-D-L. Find his huddle tape. <laughs> Ty Jackson has the best huddle tape of any kid I've seen in this class yet. He is a linebacker. He is a hitter. I can't believe he's not arrested after games. He, he is a, he on twenty four seven. He's the number two fifteen player. That seems ridiculous. They haven't looked. They haven't. They need to take another look. I, I mean, I mean he, now he's a little undersized, uh, so I can see that. I mean, in terms of like, he's not the typical Ray Lewis sized inside backer like we're talking about. But this dude is a hitter. He plays but, but Jimmy, to hit people. Let me ask this though: It's another linebacker. We yeah. we could be getting a commitment from Luke Metz this weekend. Well, I'm glad you and brought that's that up. Another linebacker. How many linebackers are we going to take? Well, first of all, Alabama does need to oversign at that position. A uh, quick quick review of what's going on, you know, on the field. Look, there's seven inside linebackers right now. Seven people that are coached by Kane Womack. Three, the first three are all likely gone. Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell both have the eligibility to return, but they're both excellent pro prospects, and it would not be a surprise if both Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell moved on to the NFL. The top backup at the position, Justin Jefferson, is a senior with no eligibility left. Um, The remaining players are are Jeremiah Alexander, Sterling Dixon, Joseph Okoronkwo, and Caden Jones, and that is it. So you're only talking about potentially four inside linebackers returning to the team next year. The ideal number is probably eight. So Alabama can sign up to four. And here's the thing. You add Luke Metz today, uh, this weekend, and you're at four already. Uh, And then you're like, boy, is there room for Ty Jackson? But here's the thing. Uh, You know, Luke Metz, we're uh, optimistic that this is going to be Alabama. But we'll see. He, he's going to Ole Miss this weekend, who has pushed really hard, and he likes Ole Miss. And Alabama's got Sanders. Alabama's got Duke Johnson. Alabama retained the commitment very early from Miles Johnson, from Bruton. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with Luke Metz. And we, we, we referred to that some yesterday. Uh, it could be Alabama. It, it might be Alabama. And Alabama uh, likes Luke Metz. Um, 
but we'll see. And then there's other big time dudes out there. As Luke points out, Ty Jackson, you can't turn Ty Jackson away. And when I say Alabama can't turn Ty Jackson away, I don't think the Cincinnati Bengals would turn Ty Jackson away. All right. Uh, when we come back, Jimmy, we're going to talk about some of your practice observations from yesterday. But right now, I want to tell you about Fire. Fire TV, that is. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball tournaments, whatever, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Trust me on this. I got it myself. I love it. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free, by the way. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking, videos, all that stuff. They got it. Check out Fire TV channels and the Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this one. Learn, to learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. So, Jimmy... Pinky out, one of the privileged to get to see um, <laughs> to get to see practice yesterday. Uh, what you see? The pass, coincidentally, that's the password to get in. You know, is that what that's, the game? Yeah, I'm out. using the wrong finger. <laughs> no wonder they're mad. No wonder uh, they didn't let people in for three years. <laughs> all right, so um, mm -hmm. you, yep. I know one of the guys you loved was Zabian Round, by the way. Yeah. I do like Xavier, and yes, I uh, went to practice with the BOL crew. And uh, one of the beauties of having so many people at uh, BOL is if you haven't, if you're not a member of that site, you know, Charles Potter is there. So you get Charlie Potter's, you get Charlie Potter's take on what he saw. You get Clint Lamb's take on what he saw. You get my take on what I saw. And we bring our own, even though Alabama provides some of this stuff to everyone, we bring our own photographer and our own videographer and shot a long video. Uh, that really puts you there. Uh, so anyway, it's privileged being part of that large crew that covers it. But um, Zabian Brown, this is what stands out to me about him. First of all, he did practice with the ones, the first team defensive backs. And again, this is yesterday. It's practice number five. Don't read too deeply into it. But the first team defensive backs were uh, Malachi Moore, Keon Sab, and Red Morgan uh, inside at safety and Husky and uh, Zabian Brown and Damani Jackson at corner. That's your, your, your ones for right now. Uh, Zabian is a true freshman, and it's impressive that he's ahead. Now, of course, it's a young group at cornerback, and, but, boy, it's star-studded. What stood out to me about Zabian is I'm surprised almost at the size. Now, I know he's not listed as a particularly huge cornerback, but he's just so well put together. He's so confident that he plays the position in a physical manner. He just looks the part. You would never know it just looking at the kid that he's a true freshman out there that's learning and finding his way. He just moves about in a real confident manner. Uh, he makes great plays on the ball. A drill they were doing is, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's a word for it that you DB coaches out there are listening. I call it the fade drill, but it's basically just, you know, a corner, he, he's in press coverage and he makes his, he makes his, he strikes the receiver at the line of scrimmage. And then, then he plays with his eyes on the quarterback and then picks off a, a, a fade uh, towards the sideline. Uh, Zabian just does this effortlessly. Like he's been doing it for years and years at the pro level. He's just, he just looks the part. Now the, I'm not saying the others don't. Zay Mincy, really long. Jalen Mbakwe is a thick, Thick, strong-looking kid Fast. for a cornerback. Fast, too, sure. But, man, Jalen and has got some pipes, man. He's got some big biceps. Uh, you know, the safety group, pretty solid, too. And, uh, of course, let's said Red and, and Keon Sab at safety, Malachi Moore at the Husky spot. So that's your first team, DBs. And uh, I think my main 
Takeaway, Lucas, I went into the spring with questions, I'm sure as all of y'all listening did. My question marks really in terms of the personnel were the offensive line position and the DBs because that's where we really got ravaged by the portal and uh, and NFL. Well, I, I just left practice yesterday feeling much better uh, because the offensive line, you don't have Caden Proctor out there yet. He won't be out there until the summer. Caden Proctor won't be able to enroll at Alabama until the summer, so he can't practice with the team uh, until the summer. But you're adding a guy that you know can be a starting tackle. So, so you've really only got one real question mark on the offensive line now, and that's one of the tackle spots. But Elijah Pritchett looks good. Uh, Miles McVeigh was actually, by the way, starting offensive line yesterday was different than the starting offensive line the last time the media got to look at things. Yesterday, the starting offensive line was Elijah Pritchett at left tackle, Tyler Booker at left guard, Parker Brailsford at center, Jane mm-hmm. Roberts at right guard, and Miles McVeigh at right tackle. First practice, James Brockermeyer was at center, and Wilkham Formby was at right tackle. Does this mean that there's been a big change and that things have been decided? No, this is just everyone getting a chance, everyone getting a chance with the ones. It's just the coaches learning about the players, players learning about the coaches. No one needs to read too deeply into any of it, but it is something. Parker Brailsford's just not the biggest dude. It's amazing that he accomplishes what he accomplishes on the field, getting those Texas monster-sized defensive tackles blocked in the in the semifinal last year. He's going up against two. You look at this kid, I'm telling you, if you saw Parker Brailsford walking around campus and heard you heard he was on the football team, I don't think most people would guess that he even played the offensive line. That's that's how it, people will be surprised on a day. And he lines up at center between Swamp Monster to his to his right <laughs> and Tyler right. Booker to his left. <laughs> that is that is absolutely making him look even smaller than he really is because he's bigger than most humans. But he looks practically like a wide receiver lined up. Hey, at isn't it kind of funny that for years, um, one of the problems we all, that a lot of people thought was that like Bryce Young couldn't see over our offensive line, and now we may end up with a six eight quarterback yeah. and a five two center, and it's, <laughs> it's like oh, we're not sure our quarterback can bend down far enough to even get the ball. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Parker Brelsford did sign up to. Too late for the Bryce Young era. That that would have been a perfect. That would have been perfect. Oh, a yep. good blocker who can snap and Bryce Young can see over him. He would have never missed a pass. <laughs> oh, by the way, all oh. the snaps were good. People people have that question, and and you know you only pay attention because it's Alabama. But uh, the few snaps that we saw from both Parker and uh, Brock J. Brock, uh, good, right on the money. Uh, uh, well, those were really Ohio State. That... It's uh, Jalen Milrow's fault anyway. That's just. I, I mean, know, that's I, just, I get what – that's Ryan Day trying to 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 deflect for Seth. That That's 100% with that. That's Ryan Day I mean, bring trying it up. to – He shouldn't – he should just say that we couldn't be more pleased with what we're seeing out of Seth McLaughlin. No snaps have not been an issue. We could not be more pleased. And Seth was always going to fix this. I think fans – we we only think back to what we saw last and yes snaps were a big problem and a big problem on the last play that cinched cinched the season and and helped the, the loss to Michigan i'm not saying any of that didn't happen i'm saying that Seth's been the center for 3 years he developed this problem uh, you know it's called the yips that's what athletes call it it's like a, a great putter on the PGA tour that all of a sudden can't make a putt a major league baseball player that can't throw it to first base from second base it just gets in your head and, and, a great and coach a from Kentucky who can't win the first round game. <laughs> He's got the yips. He's got the first round yips. But anyway, Seth was always going to solve that problem, and Nick, that's why Nick Saban didn't want Seth to leave. Uh, but you know, but hey, it all worked out for Alabama, which is all we should care about. Parker Brailsford, I think, will be in contention to be a first team All SEC center this fall. I really believe that, and uh, in good shape too with the backup, if, assuming he. He is the backup because James Brockermeyer, I think, is now ready to play. I don't think Brock was ready a year ago. He always had to gain size. Uh, with him, it was always about size and strength. He, he's a good technician down there. Uh, I think Brockermeyer is probably ready to play too. But but Brailsford is going to be a dude at center. Again, small, 
And I can't uh, prepare y'all enough for it. Most of y'all won't see Parker Brailsford in person until A Day. And even though I've prepared you for it, when you see Parker Brailsford on A Day, this is what you're going to think. You're going to think, wow, he's small. <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no preparing for it. He, he, but again, what I want, it's not a problem. It's not a, if it was a problem, Texas would have let everyone know he's too small to play center. They have jumbo sized first round picks, two 350 pound defensive tackles that Brailsford took on in that semifinal game. What happened? Washington had a million yards offense and Washington won the game. It, it's, it's not a problem. It just looks like it would be one. LinkedIn jobs. Look, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I've told you that a gazillion times. You already know it. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. I mean, it's so easy. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they might not have the time or the resources to hire. So look, post a job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, yeah, they will apply. Okay, Jimmy, so basketball, let's talk a little bit about that just for a minute because, you know, the Tide plays tonight, um, and the SEC has not uh, pulled its weight, I will say. Um, yeah. Kentucky stunk it up again. And, and you know, this is what we thought. I mean, I was a fool. I, put, I had Kentucky to the lead eight. I was a fool. I, 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 thought, I thought they had turned it around a little bit. But, number one, now it's a pattern with John Calipari. I mean, it's a pattern. He's going to – uh, lose early. Now, people will make these rash, sweeping judgments like, well, you just can't win with a bunch of one and dunners anymore. I think that's crap. I think it's more about you got to have the right coach and the right people uh, to, to make it work, no matter your situation, whether you're super experienced or not. Um, South Carolina stunk it up. I mean, South Carolina looked like the team we thought they were going to be at the beginning of the year. Then uh, Mississippi State was completely overwhelmed by the moment. I mean, that's exactly the my, my take watching Mississippi State was that I wonder, stage that stage swallowed them up. I wonder if they had played at another time instead of the very first game of the actual tournament. I'm not counting those first four games. If if they had played at three o'clock, and you know, and and been on True TV versus being at eleven fifteen on CBS and being the only game in town in that moment. I wonder if they would have played a little better. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Tennessee, of course, blows out St. Mary's and or St. Peter's Peter. or St. John's or whoever they play. St. something. St. Simon's. Um, they beat somebody. And um, so that's fine. So now the SEC has four more teams to go uh, today, with Alabama being one of them. Look, uh, it sounds like Nick Pringle will play. Um, all that is resolved, whatever that was. So that's good because there are still rumors floating out there about people being banged up. We don't know. Well, um, we do I'm, know. We know one. Uh, Davin Cosby is is the player that was injured. We did hear that there was an injury. That that injury was Davin Cosby. That's good and bad. It's bad because da it's bad for Davin, and he had helped us off the bench. And I don't know that we beat Ole Miss without Davin Cosby. Uh, he's he's been a part of our success, but uh, he has broken his foot, and it, it, he will be out for the year. But that's that's the player that was banged up because uh, we heard that rumor. I don't mean this in a mean way. I can live with that one. I don't mean that to be to to sell. If you had to lose was, someone. If you had to lose someone, that was fortunate. And and here's the deal. Now I'm not worried about depth. I mean, it's six games, and you get um, at least a day's rest between them from here on out. And more often than not, you get more than a day's rest. And um, so I'm 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 fine with that. Uh, I, again, I want Davin Cosby to come back. I love what he did to help us against Ole Miss this year, and I appreciate your efforts. I do not mean to shortchange you at all. If you had told me this was Mark Sears, I'd say yeah. I'm going to watch old episodes of The Office this afternoon. <laughs> so, yeah, because that's what we didn't know. 
it's what me and Luke heard. We could, you know, we didn't know someone, someone was hurt, but we didn't know who it was until after the show was, was recorded yesterday. Uh, we didn't find out until then. Uh, but, but then we found out it was Davin. Uh, so yeah, that was on the one hand, you could win. You could, we can win without Davin Cosby. I feel bad for him because he was probably going to get some minutes. I mean, and he had deserved some minutes, particularly just that three point shooter off the bench. Got to work on his defense in the off season. When the foot heals, back well, to work on his defense. Jimmy, I think you could say that uh, whatever you say about every other player coming back or coming in, you could say that sentence at the end and it will work. Probably right? so. Probably yeah. so. I would say uh, Griffin and Reitzel, pretty good at defense, but they still need to be better. <laughs> but and, they're, they're and pretty good defenders. Be here. We have no idea if they'll be here next year. No, no, no one has any idea. I mean, that's, I mean, I, they're the only players that I'm confident that you will see at Alabama next year are uh, Re, uh, Reed, Cheryl, uh, Nas, and uh, Houston Mal. Those four. I, I'm confident those four are going to be there. Everything else up in there. Yeah, I'm I'm a hundred percent with you. I mean, and I would love for Mark Sears to come back. I don't know that he is. I've talked to people who are connected who feel completely opposite. One of them's like, "Why in the world would he come back?" The other one's like, "Yeah, he should definitely come back. He can probably make more nil than he can." This and all I'm, comes because because of what happened last year. Everybody's nervous because we thought Betty Ako was coming back. I mean, that the, was, everyone connected to the program, and we told you guys here at Locked On, Betty Ako's coming back because we heard from inside the program he's coming back. He didn't. Then we heard JQ was coming back to the point that JQ did come back and they announced he was coming back and then he left. So for that reason alone, we just shouldn't be confident about anything until, no. until the, 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 the deal is sealed. Well, we, I'm confident about this, Jimmy, after the game tonight, you and I will go live. And so we'll have a show. So after the game, y'all join us, we will have it out there. And uh, until then roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.